it's one of the things that gripes me about people talking about farming sometimes and saying, oh, you have to be working all the time. This is a simple way that doesn't cost that much money, if it costs anything at all, to free up your time to spend, whether it's with your family or, or whatever, doing a, a, a pastime or whatever. It's a guaranteed way to give you more time, which doesn't impact on, on profitability, I consider. Hello, I'm Emma Louise Coffey, and you're welcome to the Dairy Edge, the Chagas Dairy Podcast. We're bringing you the latest information, insights, and opinion to improve dairy farm performance. On this week's episode, dairy farmer Aidan Ahern joins us to give insights into how he implements the practice of 10 and 7 milking frequency on his farm. And he is a passionate believer in work life balance and explains how he eliminates 30% of the workload associated with milking while having minimal impact on production. So, yeah, we're um, farming in Balnamila, which is halfway between Dungarvan and Capaquin in County Waterford. Um, we're milking 216 cows on approximately 90 hectares, um, and the heifers are contract reared. So, we have the, the it's basically the cows um, on the on the milking block. Um, most of that milking block is available for for grazing, but there's there's about for say eighty acres that are cro- have to cross a road to, so they generally get cut for silage. So they come into the equation then at the shoulders of the year. The purpose of our conversation today, Aidan, um, you're engaging in the ten in seven milking frequency on your farm. Can you take, give us a little bit of insight into your thinking behind this? Well, I suppose around 10 years ago, we started doing 13 times a week milking. So we just take Sunday evening milkings off. Um, and we found that very successful from, from you know, July on and found it a great time, gave us great time on a Sunday evening. And then in 2018, when we had the drought, we, we had looked into a 10 and 7 to see our, it was 3 and 2 then, to see would it help us in, in the drought situation. But we found the breaks were a bit long. So evening milking in that situation tended to be later and it extended the day. And it, since then, more research has been done. And it, it, they're saying that the, the evening milking, you don't have to change your twice the days you milk on twice a day. So that has helped that that whole thing. And so we, we look at it as a, as a way of, of reducing the number of milkings Cow health is as well. So you're reducing the number of times the cows have to, to walk into the parlour. Um, and especially at the, the later time of the year when cows are walking longer, are getting a bit heavier in calf and, and you know, when conditions are deteriorating. So it, it does help on that. And from what I've seen from, from the research is you're, you you shouldn't get overly impacted on, on in delivery of milk solids or production. So it's, it's it makes sense to me that you don't have to milk as many times and you're not reducing um, your production and cow health is, is, is improving. So, you know, it all adds up. And let's get to some of the practicalities then, Aidan. At what stage of the year are you starting the 10 and 7 frequency? So this year we started mid-July um, uh, because from Emer Kennedy's research in Moorpark, that's when they, they started there actually in the start of July last year. And that seemed, the research there seemed to work. And that's similar research from New Zealand. So we started in, in mid-July this year. We started, we did it for the end of the season last year. So it, it was the start of October last year and it worked well. So we decided it worked well last year. Why not bring it forward and, and see how we go with it from the middle of July um, this year? And and let's look then at milking time. So y- you've alluded to when you did your three and two frequency back in 2018, where you were milking twice a day, it was a later milking in the evening. So you essentially extended your working day. Um, you know, how does it work? Um, you're milking twice a day, let's say Monday, uh, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, it's once a day. So are you changing milking times depending on the day? So what we have done now is, is that we're milking on Monday, Wednesday and Friday at the same time as we would have been milking all year at six o'clock in the morning and three o'clock in the evening. So that has stayed the exact same. On our Tuesday and Thursday, then it's a nine o'clock, nine a.m. milking on a Tuesday and Thursday. So that, you know, so it's a later start in the morning um, 
and that and then on on Saturday and Sunday. So because you have two days together with only with one milking, the Saturday milking is a little bit later. So we milk at 10 o'clock and the Sunday milking is at seven o'clock. So that means you don't have any full 24 hour um, break between them. And and it, it, it look, it frees up your weekend. Maybe on a Saturday, it, you're 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 working for half the day, so it doesn't free it up as much as Sunday. But you know, it's still you still you're finished by twelve o'clock or before. Um, all jobs done, and the day is yours then. And if we look at it, then um, you you mentioned production, and I, I guess you're dropping four milkings in the week, four out of fourteen. So essentially, the cow has been milked. 30% less almost. So uh, what is the impact for your particular farm in terms of milk productivity? But comparing August um, this year as against August 2022, when we have a direct correlation, we we produced very a slightly less milk volume and a little bit more milk solids. So we uh, produced, the fat was up 0.2, and the protein was up 0.06 in comparing year on year. Now, it's not in a direct correlation because last last year there would have been more meal fed. Maybe conditions might have been on the other side of that might have been drier in more dry matter coming in, which would have been an advantage to last year. But, you know, we, we if you compare a direct co- comparison between one year and the other, there was virtually no difference in milk solids production. In, in, in actual fact, slightly more. Whereas September now is a little bit different. We have dropped about 8% in milk solids over that time. But again, there's a lot less meal fed. And I think, you know, overall, the, everybody is finding milk production is down this September because of weather conditions and stuff like that. So I am I would still perceive that we're, we're there, thereabouts producing what we would have been producing on, on the full twice a day. And, and then I suppose another aspect of milk then is cell count. And you, you know yourself when you're milking twice a day and towards the end of the season, you look at maybe switching to once a day. It's always the natural concern. But but with the 10 and 7, have you seen a rise in cell count um, or the incidence of mastitis, say, within the herd? I, I we've seen a small you will get a you will get a a, a small rise uh, and I've seen about a, a fifty thousand in in terms of 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 the rise in somatic cell which you would expect now we would have I put a caveat in in that we didn't have the ideal situation we we're probably a little bit high in somatic cell we we're in around one hundred and fifty count in July I would have liked it to be in. 50 lower than that but we were carrying a few higher somatic cell counts that are newer in the, in the system. But we still ended up in that range of between 200 and 250, which is borderline and is marginal. But we knew the cows that were doing it. And we have taken those out recently. And our somatic cell count has come back down now in the range of, of 120 to 150, which is perfect for, I consider perfect for this time of the year. So you will get a, 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 a probably around a 50, a 50 jump. But, uh, you know, if, if your cows are, if you're, if you have somatic cell under control, you know, you can, you can tolerate that as in terms of extra mastitis um, cases, probably a, a few more in those high somatic cell count cows in, in terms of any of the other cows, there has been no um, incidents. So, you know, if you're carrying high somatic cell counts, it will have count cows. It will have a, a an impact, a slight impact, but other, otherwise no. What you're telling us, Aidan, is is your your switch to uh, ten and seven has, um, I suppose, made you make the calls that you weren't making um, when you were on twice a day. Those um, problem cows, you were kind of letting them slide um, when they were being milked twice a day. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'd agree. It, it kind of focuses the mind on 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 those ones and look. They were carried over last year because of milk price, probably, you know, so they, 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 we bit, we've bit the bullet on them now and, and taken them out. And they needed to be taken out and should have been taken out earlier. But yeah, it has concentrated the mind on those, which isn't any harm. Yeah, And it's an interesting one. If you're talking about an 8% reduction um, in, in total milk solids in the month of September, and I suppose you have the caveat there that you're you're feeding less meal and we can all acknowledge the weather challenge that we have had in September, but It'll be interesting to see how that continues across the year, because I guess if you're looking at eliminating four milkings in the week, you know, there's there's a cost to, you know, doing that work. Um, so it's the balance between labour demand and 
a, a, a slight reduction in milk production, milk solids, um, is is what you're able to quote to us. And I suppose it's what level of a, a drop in production you're happy with. Yeah, and that's exactly it. And like we're trialing it as mu- as much as any as as anything else. Like you know, we 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 said we we try it. I have a full time person working with me, Stephen, and you know we had a good conversation about doing it and and the the milking. So it it frees up that that a bit of time. It takes a a, a certain amount of w- workload off. It takes four milkings a week. That's sixteen milkings a month, and over a four min- month period that's 64 milkings, which is, which adds up like, you know, which is quite a bit. And at a time of the year, which I find, you know, you, 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 you get, you get a bit tired, you get a bit stale for milking as the year goes on. So, and it's at a time of the year when you actually need to concentrate a little more when you're beginning to dry off cows or looking at drying off cows um, and, and there's different health effects. So you, you need to be able to still able to concentrate and by cutting out a few milkings here and there, it takes that, that monotony out of it, I think, you know, and for, for a small cost, it's, it's, it's what is maybe a small cost, but from, and we have that 8% at, at the moment, but we don't know how much of that is delivered from, from weather conditions and, and whatever. But even if it is, you get a small, it's not massive. And, and um, I'm willing to take that, you know, and I'm happy with how it has worked for for this year. I'm willing to to work with that. And and like anything, you probably have to do it over two or three years and make a, a you know make a educated decision over that. Anything over uh, over the first year is um can can fluctuate hugely. You know, but on a labour point of view, and also on a cow health point of view, uh, it has it has a huge benefit. You know, cows walking this time of the year in conditions that are there at the moment you'll get more lameness and stuff like that so we i have found we're not losing body condition store at the moment and we're not getting a huge amount of um, lameness and then from a grass perspective um you know while you know we aim generally to maybe do a 24 hour or 36 hour block um you know the, the 12 hour allocations can be quite restrictive for cows it doesn't always necessarily work out that way in terms of different paddock sizes so if if you're looking at cows that are being milked um you you talked there's no full 24 hour break but it's you know leading up to 24 hours how do you manage the feeding of cows at grass um, as part of this milking frequency? Yeah, well, we look at it. If you look at it, you have a far, it's a 48 hour, like, so every 48 hours is nearly the same. So it, you you work from that challenge back. So, and and we use the pasture base, um, the pasture base app, which will, uh, will, which will tell you how much each paddock has. So whether it has one and a half days grazings or two days grazings or, or whatever. So if you're traditionally working a 36 hour grazing block or 36 hour grazing, the way we would look at that, a 36 hour one, that'll actually manage two long milkings. So you're there or thereabouts with your two long milkings. If you have a 24 hour paddock, well, that'll actually manage two shorter milkings. So you can work it out. And like, I don't think you need to be, you know, accurate to the hour on it. You know, cows are pretty flexible, but that's, a, that's how we kind of judge it. Paddocks that do 36 hours, well, we can we can use two long ones. Paddocks that are 24 hours, you can do two short ones. And look, it mightn't always fit into that situation. So sometimes we do on <clears throat> excuse me, on the days that we do have once a day milking, we might end up milk moving them that evening, you know, before we finish up or whatever. So it, you have to have a bit of flexibility and and the, the cows are very flexible. I, I I'd always find that. And and finally, Aidan, um, you know, you have referred at the outset to the science and I suppose originally a lot of it coming from New Zealand. And then you refer to Emer Kennedy's work at Moore Park in more recent years. And then I suppose to to bring it all together, you know, you mentioned this is also something that you're trialing on your farm. And I suppose not all research is relevant to specific farms, but given your experience from last year and this year to date, is it something that you envisage yourself and Stephen will continue on farm into the future? Yeah, I think so. Um, it, it 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 does. It, it it makes it in my head. It makes sense at the moment. You know, we're not losing huge amount of production. We're we're freeing up time from taking out a few milkings. Um, and and it's you have better cow health as well. So all those things add up to to me. Um, and you know, if and looking back to the research, and and there has been more of it done in New Zealand than here. 
a lot of a lot of herds say after a year or two they're back up and producing more milk solids than they, what they were doing before you know so it makes sense and I'm lucky enough in a way that I have Stephen working with me here. If, if, on a, if I was on my own, it would be a no-brainer for me to to be uh, on the on the ten and seven because then you you def excuse me you definitely free up uh, more time then like you know and it, it's absolutely you know to free up those weekends. We have a small a young family here and like you need to spend time with them. You know it it's it's one of the things that gripes me about seeing. People talking about farming sometimes and saying, oh, you have to be working all the time. This is a simple way that doesn't cost that much money if it costs anything at all to free up your time to spend, whether it's with your family or, or whatever, doing a, a, a pastime or whatever. It's a it's a it's a guaranteed way to give you more time, which doesn't impact on, on profitability, I consider. It's, it's a great note to finish on. And I, I guess we're at the business end of the GAA season, Aidan. So there's there's lots of matches on, on Saturday and Sunday afternoon. So it is good that um, I suppose for you personally, you have a plan in place that you don't have to be back in the, in the parlour at three, four o'clock for, yeah. for clusters on time. And you also mentioned that having a young family, there's, there's a huge balance there. And I suppose everyone in the system needs time and your time and that the fact that you freed up some um, four evenings a week um, really maximises your opportunity there. Thanks for your insights, Aidan. No problem. Thanks a million, Emma-Louise. That's it for this week's episode of the Dairy Edge podcast. And my thanks to Aidan O'Hearn for joining me on this week's show. Don't forget to rate, review and listen on Apple, Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information, go to the Chagas website at chagas.ie. I'm Emma-Louise Coffey and join us next time for your Dairy Edge.